let's have another problem. An entity provided the following items. Let's check the requirement. The requirement is to compute for the cash and cash equivalents. So let's check each item whether it is classified as cash and cash equivalent or not. First item is a cash set aside by the board for the purchase of a plant site. So it is a cash fund for acquisition of non-current asset. And the rule for this type of fund is that it is classified as non-current asset or non-current investment so it's not included in the cash and cash equivalent balance next is cash with help from wages for income tax of employees so it's also a cash fund but it's, it's a cash fund for regular use because income tax is a regular expense so it is considered as cash next is treasury bills so, it is a cash equivalent because the problem is silent as to its term or as to its maturity. Yet, remember the rule, if the problem is silent, we assume that treasury bills is a cash equivalent. Next is a three-year time deposit purchased two months prior to maturity. So, the original term of the deposit is mentioned, 3 years. However, it's not relevant in determining whether it is cash. It is a cash and cash equivalent. So, the um, relevant date here is the date of acquisition. So, since it was purchased 2 months prior to maturity, so that's 3 months or less, it is classified as cash equivalent. Money market placement due in 6 months. Okay, So obviously, it's not classified as cash equivalent. It is classified as a short-term investment. Okay. Cash in bank net of bank overdraft of 500,000 in another bank. Okay. So if it, the bank account that has positive balance is maintained in a different bank, the overdraft cannot be offset from that bank account. Okay, so the overdraft here should be reported as current liability. So we will add 500,000 to get the adjusted cash in bank balance. Okay, so let's check the solution. Okay, so the answer is 5,408,000. 5, Let's try one more problem before I discuss bank reconciliation. So this problem involves petty cash. So for petty cash problems, usually the requirements are petty cash adjusted balance in petty cash shortage or overage if any. So for this problem, the requirement is to compute for the petty cash shortage assuming the unexpended employee's contribution is intact or not intact. So when I say intact, the envelope where the unexpended employee's contribution is placed is still closed or sealed. So it's important to determine whether it's intact or not intact because it is considered, the contribution is considered in the computation of petty cash accounted. And in, compu in computing petty cash shortage, we get the difference of the petty cash accounted and petty cash accountability. So if the petty cash accounted is lower than the petty cash accountability, meaning there is a shortage. When we say petty cash accountability, it consists of petty cash balance, petty cash ledger balance, and petty cash impurities. Okay, so I discussed the petty cash impurities in the previous slides. When you say petty cash impurities, these are the items that are found in the petty cash box, but does not, but do not belong to the to, to petty cash. Okay, so let's check the given. So there are petty cash vouchers for transportation expense, computer repairs, and postage. 
There's also a check drawn by the entity payable to the petty cash custodian or it is the replenishment check. Okay, so there is a currency. 2,475 pesos and there's an envelope containing currency so it represents the contributions of the employee for the retiring employee amounting to 2,835. So as I said a while ago, the petty cash accountability includes the petty cash balance and any petty cash impurities. So the petty cash fund balance here is 19,000 and there is only one petty cash impurity here, the envelope containing currency for a gift for a retiring employee. Okay. So the sum of these two is the petty cash accountability. So what about the petty cash accounted? So for the petty cash accounted, we consider the petty cash vouchers, the replenishment check, the currency, and the envelope uh, containing currency if it is intact so we will not consider it if it is not intact okay so here's the solution okay so assuming the contribution is intact the petty cash shortage is 3715 but if it's not intact the petty cash shortage is 6500 so why is it that the employee contribution is included in the computation of petty cash accountability whether it is intact or not intact? So when we say accountability, it is similar to responsibility. So the petty cashier is responsible for all items that are in the petty cash box. Okay, But why is it that we only consider the employee contribution in the computation of petty cash accounted if it is intact. Let's assume that there is a petty cash shortage. There's really a petty cash shortage. So obviously, the cashier knows of the shortage. So if there's a cash count, as much as possible, the petty cashier will try to conceal the shortage. So how will the cashier do it? The cashier may draw a personal check and will place the check in the box. So if that's the case, the personal check must not be included in the cash count. So in here, the assumption is that if the contribution is not intact, meaning the envelope is unsealed, the cashier might have got some money from the envelope and will just place money in the envelope when there is a cash count to conceal the shortage. The envelope here may not contain the original money. Let's have a recap. For an item to be classified as cash, it must be unrestricted in use. For a cash fund, the rule is that if the fund is set aside to settle obligation, the fund classification is parallel to the classification of the related obligation. So if the obligation is non-current, the cash fund is also classified as non-current. However, if the cash fund is set aside to acquire non-current asset, the fund is always classified as non-current investment regardless of the year of disbursement. Highly liquid investments that are acquired 3 months or less before maturity are qualified as cash equivalent. So disregard the original term and just consider the date of purchase. If silent as to term, these investments are considered cash equivalents except for treasury notes and bonds. Bank overdraft as a rule is reported as current liability. However, offsetting is allowed. When an entity maintains two or more accounts in one bank and at least one of the accounts have positive balance. And in addition, that bank account must be unrestricted. Post-dated company checks and undelivered checks are restored to cash.